12. Medicine's Mechanical Model Medical Report No. 12, written January the 27th, 1988 Every area of life and study has its presuppositions, its starting points. Whether it be science or politics, certain axioms or paradigms of thought form the premise of all life, study and research. A false premise can become progressively more dangerous for men and nations. It is thus essential that presuppositions, paradigms or axioms be analysed to determine whether or not they are true or false. The medical model of Western culture is centuries old. Its roots are in Greco-Roman thought, in paganism, and although Christian influences are present and at times have been strong, the pagan element is now dominant. Dr. Magnus Verbrugge, MD, in Alive, Ross House Books, has shown how costly it is for science to bypass the biblical view of life. Scripture tells us that God created man out of the dust of the ground, end quote, and by the miracle of his ordination, man, quote, became a living soul, end quote, Genesis 2.7. The word soul means life or living being, not the Greek idea of spirit. The key to the definition of man is not material or immaterial, but life. Man is created life, and if he separates himself from God by sin, he dies, Genesis 2.17. Our Lord says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. John 11, 25 and 26. Life is thus a religious fact, inescapably so. To forget this is dangerous. The pagan mechanical model does ignore this fact. In my student days, textbooks declared consciousness to be an epiphenomenon and dismissed it together with the fact of life as vague, imprecise and non-scientific questions. The implications for medicine from the time of the Greeks have been very serious and are now becoming deadly. The mechanical model sees the body as a material and even mechanistic thing. We all know how to deal with mechanical things to some degree, an automobile will not run without gasoline, so we add gasoline, and all is well. When it requires oil, we add oil lest the motor burn up. When mechanical parts wear out or malfunction, we exchange them for new parts. This is the dream and concept which governs much of modern medicine. It also governs fiction and films. A few years ago, a popular television series featured a bionic man, when his parts malfunctioned, he went to a medical shop to have them repaired or replaced. This is, of course, a silly dream. All of us, as we get older, become partially bionic, as we wear spectacles or glasses to see better, or a hearing aid to hear better, or even a wig or toupee to look better. But no man in his right mind prefers his bionic parts to the living parts he was born with. There is, however, much, much more to the mechanical model than this. The mechanical model produces not only a distorted medical practice, but a dangerous one. The idea of man being a person created in the image of God is bypassed. Life is no longer seen as a religious fact, but a legal definition, as Dr. Charles Rice has pointed out. In matters of abortion, the courts now determine what constitutes a person and an unborn child is now not legally a person. He is defined as a piece of tissue. Many millions of people affirm this and they are logical given the presuppositions of modern thought. Only because they are the creation of God does their conscience still trouble them. Because of the mechanical model, euthanasia is now practised in many parts of the world. The elderly are seen as old, worn-out models, now useless and fit only for the human junk pile. Given their presuppositions, i.e. the mechanical model, this idea is logical. At the same time, medical practice is pursuing this mechanical model with intense zeal. The spare parts idea is cultivated. Aborted babies are a source of raw materials and the dying are cannibalised for spare organs. 
Both the moral factor and the fact that the body works to reject these alien parts are sidestepped. Somehow the spare parts idea is going to be made to work. There are hints here and there that this kind of medical practice is not the wonder-working breakthrough that the press would have us believe. In any case, increasingly some people feel that they have a right to spare parts when they need them. On one trip I was told of the pressure put on some heart-sick and grieving parents to sign over their child's body for parts while the child was still fighting for life. One wonders, given the contempt for life shown by some of these medical men, can they be trusted with the life of a perhaps dying child whose parts can be used elsewhere? In the Netherlands, the elderly are increasingly afraid to go to the hospital, lest they be, quote, put to sleep, end quote, or killed. In the United States, some older people are promising their husband or wife never to send them to a hospital if they become seriously ill. This should not surprise us. Given the mechanical model, doctors and families will alike show less and less respect for life. What is urgently necessary, therefore, is a strictly Christian model for medical practice. This will take time and serious thought to develop. It must begin with systematically biblical presuppositions and with humility. We have had non-mechanical models, such as holistic medicine, but these are still alien to scripture and heavily influenced by oriental mysticism. It is strange that some who resent any reference to the biblical model are still ready at times to experiment with such things as acupuncture. They prefer any answer by man rather than one by God. The ultimacy of man's word seems to be their presupposition. Time is running out. Given the mechanical model, what is to prevent some parents from declaring various groups of people to be non-persons? Marxism and fascism have already done this, politically and medically. With abortion, the democracies have followed suit. Nothing is more foolish than to believe that either time or ideas will stand still. They move on, and the mechanical model in medicine means a variety of deadly possibilities. Today, most people believe in the medical model and are constantly popping pills, taking drugs as the answer to their problems. They believe that adding some pills to their system will be like putting gasoline in a car's gas tank. It will make them go. Many demand pills from their weary doctors in the confidence that some additive to their inner machinery will solve their problems. Of such illusions and evils are tyrannies made.